Hey guys, now it is the first Monday in the new year 2022 and I am so excited to be here. Now I'm sure you all are very excited to be with us as well and join us in our first episode of East Central. Now I'm glad we all made it to 2022, so let's get the first East Central of the year going. Now today there's a lot of like coming the way of one Nollywood movie. Ghana Chateau is back in the news, or should I say still, when it's still in the news. And this time, Burner Boy has joined the fray. On the international scene, Janet Jackson is getting a much-deserved documentary about her career, and she addresses the infamous nip and slip. And almost 10 years after his wife filed for divorce, there's no I'll be back for the one and only Terminator Arnold Schwarzenegger. The full details of all the gist coming up. I am a Malcolm Senior, and this is East Central. Now, one thing that we know that Nollywood has going for it are the movies and that have been that have been coming out for the past several years, honestly, from World Apart, which is my favorite. Now, Nollywood has started expanding its storylines, and we are honestly here for it. One of the movies that is bringing these expanded storylines is Gang of Looters. Now, joining me from the movie is Michael Onyeka, the movie strategist for the Gang of Looters. Now, so, Michael, just for those that have not, you know, for people that have not watched it, tell us about Gang of Looters. Thank you very much. Gang of Looters is a movie that seeks to bring out the norm, what's going to happen in a society where the wrong things hold sway, yeah. corruption, greed, personal aggrandizement, and what is generally, what meets the eye when these things are paramount. Yeah. Now, honestly, we don't have a lot of movies that usually go, you know, towards the political route. Why, why choose that? No, why choose that route, honestly? Thank you very much. It has come to a point where we need to sen sensitize the masses. Mm -hmm. Of course, at the time like this, when we're about to go into the elections and all that, they need to have the right information. It is yeah. a timely discussion, and that is why we've chosen to, sh to show a movie that really brings this up. So I really want to watch it. I can't wait to watch it. Now, what do people like me and all the, you know, the whole ma all the masses, what can we expect from this movie? Well, it's, an, it's a very exciting movie. Mm -hmm. But more than that, it's a movie with a message. Yeah. It is going to affect your life, make you think, which is the whole idea behind making yeah. the movie. It's going to make a lot of people question some of their priorities. Definitely. Now, let's, you know, let's, Stand by. Let's just take a look at the Lucius movie. I am the state. I am the social and political compass of this state. How dare you sign such a contract without recourse to me? You know that I have multinational companies that can handle such contracts. Yet you went ahead and gave such contract out. You either revoked that contract or you pay me $250 million. Excuse me, where do you expect me to get that kind of money? Well, I definitely can't watch, wait to watch that. Now, a movie strategist, is that really something? It's not like a career path that you hear a lot in Nigeria. So for those that may not know, what exactly does a movie strategist do? Thank you again very much. What we do is bring out your whole idea and message behind the mm -hmm. movie, then position it right, because this also includes where to view it, how to connect with um, some of the uh, crew members, all of the nitty gritty behind the scene. So that's what the brand, and again, talking about the brand also, we have other, other things we want to do. So the brand strategist is in charge of all of those things that do not meet the eye immediately. Yeah. Yeah. So how do you think uh, movie strategists like yourself can help Nollywood improve, you know, well, be better? What, how we can do this is share some of the insights we know, which is because when people just turn on movies, there is no structure, there is no process, there is not, no system in place. Yeah. There are people who need to look at what is going on at the background, then tell you if you need to do more of this and less of this. And yeah. if you have more of those things, then you have a very good production. And still on Nollywood, which seems to be off to a shaky start this year with Chief Daddy 2 going for broke. The movie was released on Netflix on New Year's Day, and there was a lot of anticipation because Chief Daddy One was a fan favorite.
but it's looking like the lightning is not striking twice this time. The film directed by Nia Keen and produced by Ebony Lives Moabdu as a sequel of the original Chief Daddy film which premiered in 2018. The original film was about a group of immediate and extended family members who struggled to claim a part of wealth left behind by the titular Chief Daddy. In the just released sequel, the struggle to claim, you know, the struggle to claim his wealth continues. Despite the star-studded cast, including rappers Balls and Nollywood heavyweights such as Shafi Bello, Fogaki Dello Bello, and Jockey Silver, most people believe that the sequel would have benefited from better screenplay and directions. Some others believe the movie not being up to the expected standard might be intentional and a strategy to keep people talking about it and an invitation for people to go watch the movie. Now, meanwhile, the film was produced and Ebony Life owner Moabudu on Instagram yesterday celebrated the movie being the number one in Nigeria today on Netflix. Now, Michael, I need to ask you this. What do you honestly think about the criticism? Well, uh, the truth of the matter is I've seen the movie myself mm -hmm. and um, I don't think it is so bad as they paint. I think what is happening is what I call crowd mentality. Everybody's jumping on that. Yeah. You know, everybody thinks, but if you watch it for yourself and you are really, I mean, the storyline is, is, is not as bland as the paint. It's a beautiful movie, if you now, ask me. I like how you say that, but you know, now making movies is honestly a hard process. Now, what do you think fans need to know when it comes to scripting and production? Well, thank you very much. I think fans should understand that uh, storylines are meant to interplay, in twist, mm -hmm. go in and come out of each other. Um, sometimes it's not the way you want it to be in your own head. You're talking yeah. about something that is going to lead to a final movement, a final episode. Keep an open mind when you watch a movie. Sometimes we think we want to give an, a logical explanation to a lot of things. Why not deliberately dead in those sounds inside so that you can understand what the writer and the scriptwriter and the whole production team is trying to say? I mean, I love that you said And I think, you know, people give chances to movies, but honestly, sequels, sequels, sequels. Now, is there honestly like a magic mix or combination that makes a sequel of box of its hits and popular movies work? Is there like a little portion? What is that little portion, you as a strategist, what is that little portion that can make a sequel be as good as the first one or even better than the first one? I don't think you can really measure that, okay? Most of these things are hinged on the final production and mm -hmm. the consumers play a lot of factor in that. What is this, make something come out that is insightful, valuable, that has a lot of message, and tested by the response out there. So probably the response might not be what we want it to be because of the anticipation from the first one, but still, like I said, it's a great body of work. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think that, that actually I'm quite enlightened now.